everybody welcome today we are going to talk today about the city or town or village in this case of caledonia which is in racine county and you're going to learn a whole bunch of things about the stats the background the schools the outdoor activities and a what very the special name event actually means what the name means but also at the very end you're going to want to stick around because we're going to tell you about an event that only happens once a year and it's pretty cool well, yeah. We were actually, we already know about Caledonia, but when we were doing research for this, we discovered this event that we didn't even know about, and we think you guys would really enjoy. So stick around for that, but we'll be right back with all of that information right after this. Yeah. Uh, here we go. And welcome back, everybody. So here we are. We are actually in my studio this week. Yes. Um, and mostly because my studio is better for like broader shots. Like your cameras are all so up close and everything, whereas my cameras are further away. Yes. All the cameras we've a got in here. A further away. And we can do fun stuff like this, which is zoom in a little bit and not be so far out. All right. So this week, though, we're talking about the village of Caledonia. Yeah. Now, it hasn't always been a village. No, so, indeed. It was once a town. Yes, it was once a town. When it was first incorporated, it was a town. And then what year was it that it became a village, you said? 18... No, no. Uh, no, 2006. Yeah, it didn't even become a village for some reason. It didn't qualify. Don't ask me why the, the state of Wisconsin didn't allow that. I don't know the background of that. Yeah. Not really important. It's a village now. That's what it actually is. Um, and so, yeah. So let's talk about a little bit about the name. What is the... What's the name for this, like, what is that? Well, it's actually Latin for the word Scotland. So cool. in Roman times, when the Romans were actually in the UK, mm -hmm. the one place they never got to conquer was Scotland. And it was then called Caledonia. And that's why they built the big wall to stop the, uh, so, the but Scottish that doesn't from coming really... down. It doesn't entirely relate to the, the village of Caledonia here, though. The only reason it seems that we can find is that because the, the one of the guys who settled that area in 1835, mm -hmm. he came from the county of Caledonia in Vermont. Yeah. And just seemed to like that name. And and loved the name. He and wasn't Scottish that we can find. It doesn't, yeah. have any, it doesn't seem to have any relationship to him being Scottish. No. It's just he loved his county in Vermont. And when he moved out here, he named the village Caledonia. He yeah. and a bunch of others. So maybe were, Vermont had a lot of Scottish people move there. And that's very that possible. A very much, it's much more possible that Vermont had that yeah. than Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. as we know, was primarily settled by the French. If any of you out there know the answer to that, for, uh, you know, maybe you're from Vermont and you know the answer why Vermont has Caledonia. Let us know. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So anyway, it was, it became a actual, okay, so it was a trading post to begin with. And actually it, when we did the research on this part, the trading post was actually in Racine because the guys who started the trading post owned the mouth of the Root River, which yeah. is actually Racine. So we kind of said, well, that's not really. on both sides of the Root Which river. is Racine yeah. now. It's not yeah. even close to Cal. I mean, uh -huh. I, it's not that it's not close to, because obviously Caledonia is part of the Racine area. But it's really miles away. But they did own a th over a thousand acres. They pretty much owned the city of Racine in yeah. the 1830s is what it sounds like. <laughs> they were the read... first people to develop and start a trading post there. Yeah, Right. But then really when it, it seems like it was 1835 when Caledonia itself was put together. Yeah. Okay. So when Caledonia itself was put together in 1835, but then it wasn't incorporated until 1842. Mm -hmm. So it got incorporated in 1842. Um, and what's interesting, and I didn't know this either, that it was settled by the Czechs. Yeah, that, that was, was a bit later in 1888. Well, actually, they were called Bohemians at the time. Yeah. They had the general phrase Bohemians for anybody from that area of the world. Uh -huh. Then it became Czechoslovakia. And now it's the Czech Republic. But that actually explains some of the names in the area as well. Yeah. But what's interesting to me about Caledonia as well is that it actually um, is split into two different areas, really, in like. People see it as two different sections in a way. Yeah. Um, and so, first of all, of course, it covers 49 square miles. And what did you say? How much of it was water? Three square miles of it is actually water. Is so. just water. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but water. And yeah, the riverways and, and the that doesn't part even of count the, the fact, That doesn't even count the fact that the northern section of Caledonia is bordered by Lake Michigan. 
Yeah. We have some of the we have some of the most um, expensive properties in this area are along the coastline of Lake Michigan on the north side in Caledonia. Yeah. That's really where probably the like you find your million plus properties consistently uh-huh. along the shoreline of of, Mich- of Lake yeah, Michigan. Yeah, from Wind Point upwards through mm-hmm. the you know that side of the coast. Yeah, because you've got Wind Point kind of planted right in the middle of Cal, like yeah. right on the edge of Caledonia. But that's only about that's really only from about three mile to four mile that little yeah. section that is Wind Point. Once you get north of Four Mile Road. Then that's all Caledonia. It's all Caledonia, yeah. Right, exactly. Um, and so the population of Caledonia, though, even though it's 49 square miles of space, there's only about 25,000 people that live in that area. Yeah, so people get a lot more land with the properties. If they're buying property there, you do tend to get a bigger lot. So that's where that's where the you know that's housing the comes in, what, what the appeal is. Because it's more rural, you do get a lot more land with your house. Sure. Sure. And but you also the average income in Caledonia is only about forty eight thousand dollars. A lot of people in this area, they think that what makes Caledonia great is that it's a more upscale area. But what they're not paying attention to is the whole section on the north side that is Crestview which yeah. is really affordable and is a bedroom community really for a lot of people who work in Milwaukee or Oak Creek. Um, like it's, Definitely. We've I mean, we've we sold so many houses up stuff. there. So we've sold a lot of stuff on the in the Crestview area as well as Western Caledonia. But most of the people we've sold to in the Crestview area are just kind of average blue collar. Some you know, of or, first or time home buyers. Yeah, a lot of first time home buyers up in yeah. that area. So, yeah, absolutely. And the average home price in Caledonia is only three hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Now we say only, but in the city of Racine, the average home price is two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So to have three fifty in Caledonia. And bearing in mind that it takes, it's an average, and so you've got the million dollar homes, right? And the two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollar homes. And you're coming out with an average of 350. So that means there's a lot more on average that are of a lower price than the 350 to bring that down. Well, and I think one of the things that also, let's go into the second area because we talked about those are kind of like the stats of Caledonia. Yeah. But let's talk about the second area and one of the, some of the things that attract people to the Caledonia part of Racine. And one of the things is the schools. Oh, definitely, because you've got families moving into the area and they're interested in the school system and the level of schools that they have there. Now, we've got some great schools in Caledonia. You've got Olympia Brown and you've got Gifford School, Mm -hmm. which, you know, that's really good. They've got really uh, good marks there. If you're living in the Racine area, Case... Um, Case High School would be where anybody from Gifford usually goes to Case. Um, Olympia Brown, however, usually feeds to Horlick. Yeah. So that usually feeds Horlick High School if your kids are going to the Olympia Brown or if you're on that north side. However, one of the other things that I think is important to mention is um, how many of the people who live in Caledonia don't actually use the public school system. Yeah, because you have a great private school system in Caledonia as well. And with the um, vouchers system in yeah. in Racine or in Racine County in our school district, um, you can actually sometimes, I mean, there are kids from really lower level income that are still going to private schools. Yes. And so um, they're going to things like the Catholic schools, the Lutheran schools. And then, of course, we've got um, Prairie, which is right in Wind Point. Yeah. Now, which, to be honest, Prairie is where a lot of people in Caledonia choose if you don't want to go religious if you don't want to go with lutheran and you don't want to go with catholic schools because those are both religious based uh-huh. schools and you want just a great private school then that's probably prairie which is in wind point so you've got um the lutheran schools you've got the catholic schools and then you've got prairie as well as your private schools and quite yeah. frankly a lot of people take advantage of the voucher system if they are lower income and if they're higher income they don't need the voucher system and they're still choosing private school over public um, however, the two public schools that we do have, both Gifford and Olympia Brown, those at those uh, lower level, like Olympia Brown is a brand new school in the last couple of years. So Olympia Brown is on the north side, and that's a really, it's nice because it is a brand new school, and it's up on five yeah. and a half mile as well. Yeah. So it's way up there, um, and which is really nice. Of course, Gifford in the last uh, five years expanded. It used to be just one through six, grades one through six, uh-huh. but then it went to grades one through eight now. So that makes that really 
kind of awesome as well. So, all right. So what are the things we can do in Caledonia, though? That is <laughs> super important because, well, actually, no, you know what? Let's talk about what you can't do. You can't really go shopping and still be in Caledonia. No. Uh, if you want to do grocery shopping, you're very limited. Yeah. Um, you've got pick and save. You've got pick and save on the north side. Or you've got pick mile. and save on the north side. Yeah, <laughs> pick and save on the north side. That's what I said, on the north side. By Four Mile Road, that's it. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Uh, Fair dues, you do have Danny's Meats. So yeah, if, so... So he's a butcher. That's a butcher shop. Yeah. And if you need and some really... And he does fine, fabulous oh, meat. Oh, fantastic. Danny's is a great, great place, for sure. And he's the one that's responsible for the Thanksgiving. Dan and uh, Ray's Thanksgiving Dan thing and in Ray's, Racine yeah. every year. Yeah, they give back to the community a lot every they year. They do. There's nothing out in Franksville that is what you would consider a grocery store that services yeah, yeah. the western part of Caledonia. However, I think that a lot of people in recent years have started to use the delivery services. Yeah, so I've, many of I've them. often seen different delivery services in Caledonia um, driving around to do their drop-offs, and so a lot of people are making good use of them. But the reality is there's just not a lot of shopping in that area, um, but there's a lot of bars and restaurants. Oh, yeah. Definitely. There's a lot of great places to eat. Um, we got Sebastian's on the north side. Um, you've yeah. got Mocha Lisa which is a really great little coffee shop. It's a house that was converted into a coffee shop, and it's just super cute. Yeah. Right there on the corner of... It's Ford. one place I haven't been. You've been. I know you've been there. I've been there. It's interesting you haven't been there yet. Yeah, so. you haven't taken me. Huh, interesting. So, what do you mean I haven't taken you? I didn't realize that was my <laughs> responsibility. Um, so, yeah, so we got Mocha Lisa, and there's plenty of bars all along the area. And yeah. a lot of the bars serve food as well. Yeah. But let's talk about one of the, probably I would say the biggest thing that people love about Caledonia is the space. The wide open spaces, yeah. yeah. There's, there's plenty of parks, there's plenty of walking areas along the coast as well. So you can see, you know, yeah. Lake Michigan from close up. Yep. Um, you've got plenty mm. of parks there. You've, you've got golf courses that you can go on like mm -hmm. Johnson and uh south well, you've got johnson Hills. johnson golf course course is like kind of right on the border between um between mount pleasant and caledonia yeah it's technically in mount pleasant i think it's a little bit that comes up but, but it is a it is above the line of caledonia yeah it's actually in caledonia but to get to it i think you have to be in mount pleasant because i think you yeah ask. possibly because there's that little strip it looks like a big golfing tee in actual fact yeah it's true course. it does kind of look like a golf tee doesn't it <laughs> and so it starts off right at the very edge yeah because you come out on northwestern and you go up into like you go up into the where you can either go to the neighborhood or you can go into the golf course yeah so yeah so it is in caledonia proper but it's just barely there it's like right on the yeah. edge of it um but then you said there's also the south hills country club yeah south hills nice. country club they've also got a driving range there mm -hmm. and golf club looks very nice i haven't been there but it looks very good the other two sports that caledonia seems to have is the uh like shooting sports so they've got the winchester gun club and then of course you have shooters as well which are both um like gun ranges, basically. Yeah. Although you were saying that you were looking at Winchester the other day and their membership is actually closed. Yeah, they've, they're full up on members. They have a waiting list on they members. They actually so. have a waiting list um, yeah. for members to join. So. Right. so that's not really... I mean, it's great that it's there if you're already a member, but it is a waiting list. And there are other gun clubs and stuff if you're into that in the area that uh -huh. aren't that far away, to be honest. But then we also have some really... Okay, so we say there's not really shopping, but there are a lot of like farm stand orchard kind of places because when you yeah. have a lot of space and a lot of farmland which is what caledonia has a lot of still there's still quite a bit of farmland in caledonia and as a result we have things like borzinski's um we have things like um the orchard store at old homestead yep. you've got cleese out on a limb which um both of those fruit farm. they all have like fruits and veg all like all the time in yeah from the summer uh, usually starting in the spring to the all the way into the fall yeah so um borzinski's, and some of those open. you can pick your own as well like uh uh the one on the orchard store they yep. also allow pick your own there not right. sure about Cleese, um, but yeah, you Probably. can pick your own fruit. And so you've got strawberries and berries, and then you've got apple, apple orchards. And yeah. 
Yeah. So, so those are really great. I know Borzinski's has kind of like open a lot more because they are open at times like they have all like different seasonal stuff. Yeah, and they have, um, they're uh, not open year round. They do close in the winter time. Yeah. But then hey, it's a farm store. It's yeah. I mean, you're not growing. And they lot. do have a cafeteria in there as well. In yes, they've, de and they've developed that a little bit. Yeah. So. But the other reason that people really like it is that all of the soccer teams in the area for the kids, there's a huge complex for soccer. Yeah. Out in Franksville slash Caledonia. Like, Franksville covers Caledonia. We should probably explain that. Well, it's actually that. a village within Caledonia village. Yeah, yeah. It's like Franksville is this little tiny section, but it's covered the whole if it is covered by Caledonia. Yes. So... Um, Franksville is like the postal code, but Caledonia still does like the taxing for most of uh -huh. it. So they still cover the taxes yeah. and the services for that. As so you've got the soccer goes. fields over there. There's multiple yeah. soccer fields there. So lots of teams use it for their games. Yeah. So that's a great place to go and just watch a game of soccer, you yeah. know, if you if you like that. It's all um, kids soccer. Yeah, it's, it's kids not, soccer. It's not adults. It's, it's all great. the kids soccer teams and stuff. But they do a lot of practicing there and all the leagues are there in the summertime. Yeah. And, of course, their games and stuff. And then, of course, you also have in that same area in Franksville, not at the soccer fields, but just separate from it, <laughs> which is good because it's not at Yeah, because otherwise fields. the parents might, you know, get a little bit Larry. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to kids, just, would you like to tell the, people what Larry the other means? Thing, well, Larry <laughs> means you know getting over enthusiastic. You know, ref, that was a bad call. Get yeah. your eyesight and checked. And why would they get a little Larry? Why would they get a little? Well, they might because if anyway, they had but. the beer garden, at the so that's, we hadn't even mentioned it. Yeah, that's why I was like, <laughs> why are you telling them they get a bit Larry? Okay, so because there is the beer garden at Franksville in Franksville yeah. as well. And that Very is open. popular location. That though, opens, yeah. I think it said May 17th this year. It's only open like for the summertime into the fall a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think it goes through Oktoberfest because I think they do an Oktoberfest thing out there every year. Um, and so there's the beer garden there. And and then opposite it, over, over further along, I should say, you have the soccer fields for all the kids. Yeah. The other thing, that's all on the west side of Caledonia. Mm -hmm. That's all stuff that's on the west side. However, what a lot of people don't realize is that if you buy on the north side of Caledonia, the north eat like when you're right towards lake michigan you've got lake michigan right there and that neighborhood crestview that we were talking about or um there's also like lakeview and some other things that, around that olympia brown area there's actually a walking path that you can go down to that park and one of our clients said yeah he used to carry he would carry when he was selling his house with us he would carry his kayak down and get yeah. in the lake there and they would people kayak off of that uh -huh. so they do a little bit of swimming kayaking it is like a public space where you can actually get down and access lake michigan um so that you can get down to lake michigan and just enjoy everything there is about lake michigan yeah right there so but there was one thing i think we've pretty much covered everything about caledonia that people should know yeah except for the one thing i did say that we're going to talk about um which is the 1888 schoolhouse so once a year and yep. it's once a year only yep they open up the for one day house just for, for one, one day, day for a short period of time and they have school kids and school teachers that dress up in the period clothing mm -hmm. and they use books from the period as well mm -hmm. and they have a lesson there Mm -hmm. In the schoolhouse. How cool is that? I know. And it's for ages, it's for third, fourth, and fifth graders, yeah. I believe is what they said, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So for third, fourth, and fifth graders. And the and it is an open house to the public as well between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So yep. only five hours is all it's open. And it's a Saturday on May 11th this year. This year it happens to be May 11th. Yeah. So. That's kind of cool, which we didn't even realize what the exact date was when we planned this video uh -huh. for Caledonia. And now we're like, this is awesome timing because here yeah. we are. We're just a couple of weeks before this year's event. But every year they do this. And I'm guessing it's sometime around the middle of May. It must be what mm -hmm. they do every year. Yeah. But it's a really cool experience. Yeah. I'd love to have done something like that when I was at school. Yeah, you always liked playing dress up. That's why. <laughs> but you, you're a terrible Don't student. Don't give away my secrets. <laughs> all right. Well, that is pretty much all we have for today. If you guys got any value from this video, do us a favor. Click like, comment, subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our other content. Comment. We'd love to hear your comments and find out what your feedback is. Maybe you know something about Caledonia that we don't know because... Russ and I didn't grow up in this area. No. So we just do this through research. So if you have something else to contribute to the community, absolutely put it in the comments below and share it with everybody else. We love really cool trivia about 
anything in this area. And thanks so much for joining us. Look Come forward back. to hearing from you. Yeah. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye.